Being deported to an El Salvador he hadn't seen in more than three decades was a trauma Hugo Castro recalls clearly. The 51-year-old said Monday that his country must begin preparing now to receive the nearly 200,000 Salvadorans who may have to return following the Trump administration's decision to lift their temporary protected status next year. The main problem for deportees is that they're made invisible. They're rejected, there's no work. They don't help us, said Castro, who was deported from the U.S. In 2015, the U.S. announcement brought fears that a major source of income for this poor Central American nation will be cut off and that families could be separated. But there was also a hint of optimism that Salvadorans with many years of experience in the U.S. could bring expertise and investment to spur the economy. Homeland Security Secretary Kirsten Nielsen said Salvadorans who have stayed in the U.S. with temporary protected status only a fraction of the estimated 2 million Salvadorans living there would have to leave by September 9, 2019, unless Congress came up with a solution allowing them to stay. The Trump administration's decision to end special protections for nearly 200 Zero 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 Salvadoran immigrants filled many Salvadoran families with dread Monday, raising the possibility that they will be forced to abandon their roots in the U.S. and return to a violent homeland they have not known for. The Trump administration's decision to end special protections for nearly 200 zero 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 Salvadoran immigrants filled many Salvadoran families with dread Monday, raising the possibility that they will be forced to abandon their roots in the U.S and return to a violent homeland they have not known for. The temporary protected status program has been offered to citizens from a number of countries fleeing natural disasters or other instability. The affected Salvadorans received the status after earthquakes in 2001 killed more than 1,000 people. Thousands more who arrived in the United States in recent years fleeing gang violence were not eligible. Castro went to the United States as a teenager to study at a college in Atlanta. During his junior year his family back home lost nearly everything when the bank seized their coffee operation. Dropping out, he worked at a country club and a bookstore and became manager of a Mexican restaurant. Then a run-in with police led to more than two years in immigration detention as he unsuccessfully fought deportation after living in the U.S. for three decades. His first three months back in El Salvador were the worst, he said. He suffered from depression and didn't want to leave his mother's home. People told him a 49-year-old man should not depend on his mother to support him, so he started looking for work. I went everywhere, to restaurants. I told them I had a lot of experience and that I spoke English, but they rejected me, he said. Eight months after arriving, Castro finally found work at the Salvadoran Immigrant Institute. The nonprofit group recognized the value of Castro's bilingualism and the experience he had gained through the deportation process and it put him to work helping other deportees reintegrate into society. Castro said programs like his are very limited and more needs to be done for returnees.